What is going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys something really, really cool. So a couple weeks ago, I got approached by a company called Flixir, and this is basically a cloud based editing software. So the really cool thing is that I can actually show you guys with an example is that a couple weeks ago, I got myself a brand new MacBook, of course, for editing, for example, on the road or just somewhere else outside of my computer. Now, the thing is that not everybody has the same kind of strength when it comes to a computer a macbook is quite strong with like an m1 chip but of course i receive tons and tons of questions from people that saying like what can i do if i can't afford a brand new computer if i can't afford a better laptop or even just a little bit more of ram to still edit videos properly but this flexier software in the cloud doesn't actually need any hardware specifications or strong you know processors or ram because this is all done in the cloud we're using their servers so no matter how slow of a laptop do you have we can edit right in our browser which basically allows us to use the full playback for example without any lag so it's really really cool that we can actually start editing flawlessly using flix here so if you guys are excited for this video make sure to smash the like button down below subscribe if you're here for the very first time watching and i would say let's start editing in the cloud right after the intro All right, guys. So as you can see right now, we are on flixier.com. And right here, when you create an account completely free of charge, when you log in, you can actually start creating your own video as it's just like this video editing software, but in browser. So that basically means that you can edit on their servers. Like I mentioned in the intro, you don't need like really, really high end equipment. So right here, it says, welcome to Flixier, create video. Right here, we have the account settings, the users and terms, and of course the billing and the plans. So right here, we click on create your first video which is of course are gonna allow us to make a project name that's it I'm gonna call this Vegas Pro tutorial and of course I'm going to pick the standard 16 by 9 because it's nice that you can also have this square one for example for Instagram that you want to have a 4x5 or you can also put a 1x1 one one, or an Instagram story like 9x16. So I'm right now I'm going to pick the 16x9 widescreen and I'm going to hit create. So now it's really really nice that you can have your timeline at the very bottom sorted as well if you want to make it a little bit bigger right here. The preview also shrinks a little bit so that if you want to divide your screen up and do a little bit more let's say that you have like a lot of you know video tracks and audio tracks you can you can completely customize it right here and then of course we have the preview itself on the right it says click an item in the timeline to apply filters or change its speed so on the left we have our tracks it says new track new track you can call this for example video track one and you can add in for example a new track and you can call this audio track one so that's really nice you can also sort these two just like that so now on the very top left we have our library it's empty in here import your photos videos or music clips to create videos so that's where you can actually drop in all your files from your you know sd card and all that below that we have of course the stock section where you can actually drag in a lot of different files into your project let's say that you need this kind of really nice beach clip but let's say that you have for example a screen like this and you want to have it completely filling the screen you can right click you want to hit transform hit 90 degrees and you can just keep transforming it for example like that until it is the desired rotation just like this for example and then you can just drag this across your entire preview screen or if you want to have it for example transformed vertically or horizontal it's really a really cool that you can choose how you import it so right here below that we have the audio tab which basically means that you can have a lot of different sound effects like samples music and all that it's really nice that you have a lot of different tracks in there like two minutes it's really really cool below that we have the overlays which basically means that we have for example you have like this square center we have all different ones you can play over your video and then at the bottom it says below that it says motion so that basically means that you have so that means that you have so that means that you have so many different overlays let's say that you don't want to spend $30 on a lower third on Fiverr for example to, for somebody to make it for you you can just drag this really simply into your timeline it's completely transparent you can for example place this one at the very bottom left corner and if I play this back as you notice it looks really really cool it actually saves you so much money because let's say that you have to get all these assets for free like this you know this animation for example or all the different ones such as your Facebook and also 
like your lower third for Instagram. It's really, really cool that you can change up everything like this. If I click on edit animation, you can even choose your different username. So let's say I'm just going to type in my Instagram name just like that. As you notice, it changes completely. So if I click on save animation, this is what it looks like. It's really advanced as well, guys. If you pay attention to this one right here where it says follow and it clicks and it has this really nice spark in the Instagram colors. It's so, so nice that you have all these, you know, transitions and all these overlays and assets built into the software. And then right here, of course, what, what is the software without the text function? So right here, we click on here. You can have all kinds of text ones pre-made for you if you want to. Right here, you have all kinds of shapes if you want to discover a little bit more about that. And at the bottom, we, of course, have the transitions. Okay, so let's go ahead and start importing a little bit more of a footage. Okay, so right here we have the blue import button. So we're going to click that and then you can choose where do you want to upload it from? Is it going to be your device? Meaning that it will open up your computer, Google Drive, Google Photos, Dropbox, OneDrive, Zoom, Twitch, Flow Player, YouTube, SoundCloud, Loom. So it's really cool that you can have so many different upload sources. So I'm going to click on my device because I have the files on my computer. All right, guys. So this is going to be the raw clip that I made for the Samsung microphone review from last week or the week before. So I'm going to click on import all. And I'm going to show you how to make this really, really cool. And just to make it on a really professional level. So right here, I'm going to insert this one into the timeline. All right. So as you know, it is, it looks really, really plain because this is usually the way I record. I always record without any color grading as plain as possible. So this is always how I record. This is called vlog into my camera. It's like this separate thing that you have to buy. And this is purposely only for having more color grading options. So right here, as you notice, it looks very plain. So let's go ahead and start grading this clip a little bit more because you don't need the most expensive software to achieve the same result. Okay, so we need to be on the right side of the screen for this. So right here, it says effects. So right now we have all kinds of presets. So let's click this butterfly wave and let's drag that on here. But of course, as you notice, it's a little bit on the glitch side. So I'm going to delete this one. So let's go ahead and click on here, but it's called effects. It's not really like what we need when it comes to color grading itself. So right here, it says this one. We have the sepia, we have black and white. We have the vintage, we have the brownie, we have sharpen. So it's really cool Then I'm going to also pick up the saturation a little more. Well, actually quite a lot more because it's almost black and white as you notice. So I'm going to bring up the saturation a whole lot. Then I'm going to also in increase the contrast a whole lot. And then the brightness just a little bit. So as you notice, this looks actually really, really nice and right. And, it, and you even have your advanced ones such as the red right here when I click for example on Polaroid it's a little bit too on the pink side so what you can do is you can just add in more blue and more green and you can also take out a little bit more of the red as you notice so that's how you can grade it into a really a really nice way you have all these three sliders so let's say that this one looks really really nice and cinematic that is just a way to go ahead and grade this clip. All right, so I actually spent about five or 10 minutes grading because this is just the way that I would originally actually use it. So if I play this back, as you notice, it doesn't have audio. And that basically means that I record my audio separately. So let's go ahead and drag in the audio clip as well so you guys can see. All right, guys. So as you notice right here, the audio is also included in this one. Right here, also, we can choose to affect more gain into it. The volume, you can even pan it to the right speaker or the left speaker or the right the left side and then right here the volume is all the way up but if you increase the gain a little bit and i actually want to make sure that you don't want to go into the red right here when these two markers happen as long as it's in the green and in the yellow and it's not really touching any of the red one that's where you know that you're in the sweet spot right here you what you can also do is you can trim this guy down for example to the same length it will also show you guys this line that is exactly on the same one and then you can just hold left control you can select both of these and you can drag it anywhere on your timeline like it's grouped you can also go back and click on this icon to actually go back all the way to the beginning of your timeline and it's really really nice that you can also add in background music and let's say that we're going to add in this really really nice overlay right here it says overlay right here let's go to the emotion overlays i'm going to pick this subscribe one let's drag it on here above our timeline so let's go ahead and drag it in here above our video and it's nice and transparent so let's play it back right here it looks really really cool and it's really nice that it plays back so smoothly because it's not using any of your computer. It's completely in browser, as you notice. I'm in Chrome, and that's really, really nice that you don't need, for example, 64 gigs of RAM or like an i7 or an i9 processor in this way or a really, really heavy graphics card to play this smoothly because you're not using any of your hardware. All right, guys. So what's also really, really cool and what's also possible is this freeze frame effect that you can see, of course, in a few seconds that I'm going to show you. So you can also freeze the frame. You can zoom in and all of that. 
So let me basically show you what that looks like. For more precision, you can move the playhead one frame at a time by using the left and right arrow keys. Once you've reached the desired location, right click on the video in the timeline and select freeze current frame. You can change the duration of the effect and then click on add. You'll notice the freeze frame will appear on the timeline as an area covered in diagonal stripes. You can further adjust the duration of the effect by dragging on the edge of the freeze frame like this. That's it, you've now successfully added a freeze frame to your video. Now let's say that you have this video where you want to slowly zoom in over 2 seconds, stay zoomed in for a while and then slowly zoom back out. I'm going to show you how you can go about doing that. Let's open the video up in Flix here. To zoom in on a video, you need to increase its scale value. If you simply select the clip and increase the scale, your video will simply be zoomed in for its entire duration. To achieve our slow zoom effect, we need to use keyframes. If we select the video and click on add keyframe, you'll notice two dots appearing on the timeline. These are our keyframes. We can click on them to select them or drag them around with the mouse button. We want our zoom to happen over a period of 2 seconds, so let's move our keyframes 2 seconds apart. Now make sure your second keyframe is selected. You can select keyframes either by clicking on them or by using the controls in the object inspector menu to jump to them. If a keyframe is selected, it will appear red. With the second keyframe selected, let's increase the scale of our video and then center it on the canvas. Now if we move the playhead back and watch the video, you'll notice that it starts zooming in around the first keyframe and achieves the maximum zoom value at the second one. That's because keyframes essentially allow us to set starting and ending values for our video's parameters and Flixir dynamically modifies them over a period of time, generating a smooth transition. Basically, you just tell it what you want the video to look like at the beginning and end of the transition and the computer handles the rest. To zoom the video back out, let's add two new keyframes, a few seconds after the last one. We now have four keyframes in our video. We'll leave the values of the third one untouched and then we'll skip over to the last one and click Fit Canvas. Notice how the video now zooms back out slowly after a few seconds. Keyframes are an extremely flexible and powerful tool that you can use to animate pretty much anything in your clip. You can even use them to move text and shapes and create your own motion titles. Feel free to play around and experiment with them on your own to see what you manage to create. So that's very, very nice that you can just play this back. This is how you can actually edit. Of course, I can actually edit an entire video, but you know how it works when you click, for example, on the transitions one. Right here we have this one. So you can also have a blur transition into a next clip. So the way you cut is actually pretty simple. You just want to press S on your keyboard. S stands for split, just like Vegas. Right here, if you click on there as well, it will actually make a nice cut. So let's go ahead and create a really nice transition too. So I'm going to also cut in the audio for just a second to make sure everything is nice and aligned. So that's why you want to make sure they're overlapped as you notice. It's really, really nice. Everything is included in this one, especially for the audio that I'm so excited about. All right, guys. So this program is actually a lot more than I just showed you guys today, like how to cut, how to delete it, how to color grade, how to add in music, how to add in these really nice overlays. But the last thing I want to show you guys is how to properly export it. So right here, it says a blue export button so right here brings us to a brand new window where you can call the name of the video as well the name of the file right here is going to be of course video plus audio and then we're going to click on also publish too you can choose if you want to upload it so right now we're going to click on the set current frame okay so right here are the export settings so we can click on youtube for example then you can also just connect it with logging in if you want to right here it is the name of the video and right here at the bottom you can also see how long the exporting is going to take 
Right here, we're going to pick video plus audio, of course, because we also want to render our audio with it. And then we can just click on export video. And now it is going to export it. And then we'll be ready in about three minutes. All right, guys. So another really, really important thing that I want to point out is when you're going to go and export your video, no matter if your video is three minutes in length or even an hour in length, the export time takes exactly as short as it is always going to be. No matter if you have a really, really long, like an hour and a half documentary, or a movie that you made or like just a one minute or two minute vlog everything will be in the same because like I mentioned at the beginning of this video you're not using the hardware of your computer and the hardware actually depends on how fast and how long the rendering takes because of course this is all done in the cloud you don't have to worry about every single you know length of a video as everything will be the same as we're not using hardware you can find your exported project in the dashboard we'll also send you an email and a notification when it's ready so when it's finished exporting guys you can go into your dashboard it's really simple to download the video and publish it anywhere you like and that's basically how to use Flixir and this cloud editing without actually having to buy new software or a brand new computer if it's not strong enough and that is basically how to use it all right guys so that's it for this video this is how to use Flixir and of course I wish I actually showed these guys way way earlier because you don't really need the most expensive upgrades when it comes to your computer if you can just use their servers and their graphics and all that in the server in the cloud so thanks a lot to Flixir for sponsoring this video. Everything you guys need to know to get started using Flixir is in the description. Thanks a lot and I'll see you guys obviously in the next video.